Wade and Wade reacts. This is our review for Godzilla X Kong The New Empire. We're gonna tell you the good, the bad, and our nitpicks. We get to see Godzilla and King Kong in action. At the beginning of the movie, I won't say at the beginning of the movie, but a few scenes out from the beginning of the movie, you get to see Godzilla waking up from his slumber and destroying some cities on his way to consume power from a nuclear power plant. Then he charges up and becomes Super Saiyan Godzilla <laughs> with a blue aura emitting from his, his body, emitting from the creases in his skin and of course the spikes on his back. And the French military, I believe, tries to mm -hmm. attack him for some reason. They still believe that missiles and bullets can work on Godzilla, even though two movies have proven otherwise. Three movies actually have proven otherwise. So they're shooting him with the missiles and bullets. And then he causes some type of, he spreads his arms and causes some nuclear explosion and destroys all of the planes that were in the area at that time. Then he descends into the ocean. And the movie keeps going from there, but we will save certain parts for the, the later area of this review. But then you get to see King Kong fight Godzilla again. You get to see them team up and fight against the Scar King and the... Oh, I forgot the name of the Ice the, the new Titan that they said was responsible for the Ice Age. So that's, that's the good that I found in this movie. That, that part was enjoyable for sure. Yeah, you pretty much summed this up. <laughs> I don't have much good to say about this movie. The special effects were good and the monsters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought that the ape community was a good touch mm -hmm. in, in the Kong hollow, what do you, a hollow earth part of the world. Yeah. Yeah, I really liked it too. It was fun to see how they communicated with each other. And it was fun to see King Kong finally get to interact with apes of his kind. Yeah. Definitely. That's about it. That's all the good. <laughs> so let's get into the bad. Man, this story focused way too much on the humans and too little focus was placed on the monsters that we came to see. The movie is called Godzilla X Kong. It's not called humans featuring Godzilla and King Kong. This movie focused on the wrong characters. They focused on a scientist, I think she was in the last movie, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. They focused on a guy who was King Kong's dentist. There was a black guy, I forgot his name. I didn't even notice him in the last movie. He was the last too. I forget his name. No disrespect to the character or the actor. He did a good job at what he was supposed to do. But the focus was placed on them and a little girl from the Iwi tribe mm -hmm. that was the chosen one to awaken Mothra. Mothra ain't do nothing in this movie. Mm -mm. Matter of fact, to keep it real, King Kong and Godzilla ain't really do nothing in this movie. No, they didn't. I, I, I really too much didn't care for this, you know, that storyline. The storyline with the humans was so trash that it made Transformers look like an Oscar <laughs> or winning movie. Like, man, they, the humans took up all the time. I'm tired of that little girl that has power, the connection. To, man, when they put when I when they we they went underground and I and I seen that it was humans underground, I was like, man, <laughs> I, <laughs> I already know where they going. And they went where I thought they were gonna go, which made this movie born. This movie was so born that our dad went to sleep, yeah. woke back up <laughs> during the action scene at the end of the movie, right? <laughs> Bro, <laughs> this movie, man, it it, it, did, it disappointed. It disappointed because I, I thought that uh, this movie, you know, the, from the trailer, mm -hmm. looked action packed, but it's more of a human story. They it, care more about the the Ewees or whatever. That was that their name? Yeah, I think it's the Ewees. It's, it's kind of sound like Ewoks from Star Wars, but in uh -huh. that, uh, and, and there's a lot of shoehorn stuff in this movie too, like yeah. the the, uh, the introduction of Mothra. Why was Mothra needed in this movie? Like I mean, Mothra didn't do a thing. Shot some web. That's about it. Exactly. Shot some webs and didn't even engage in the last final fight scene. And speaking of the final fight scene, man, it was so disappointing. It didn't make any sense. Like you said, the trailer made it seem like this movie was going to be full of monster battles, monster action. The last fight scene had its good parts, 
But the last fight scene was not long enough and it had a lackluster ending. The Scar King didn't really have any support. King Kong Godzilla teamed up. And then even the monster that was on Scar King's side teamed up with Godzilla and Kong to I defeat think, the Scar King. Yeah, I think they got rid of his, uh, his uh, apes too early. They, they should have made it up top too because that would have been nice to see Kong and Godzilla have to you know, fight the Scar King and the little ice lizard and the apes at the same time. And then you talked about the Scar King's what do you call that, it? Uh, little, stone yeah, to control yeah, yeah, the ice titan. Yeah, they didn't even explain that. I don't know what <laughs> I don't know what that was. How he got that? <laughs> they didn't care about that. They care more about the humans. Like you said, the dentist, the little girl. I, you know what? I got something to say about the humans, but I'm gonna say that for the next pick section. Yeah, man. They definitely should have focused more on explaining the world of monsters because there is still a mystery as to where the apes came from. There's a mystery as to where the Ice Titan came from. They could have delved more into the history of that world instead of focusing so much on the humans and giving them most of the screen time, which was just a bad idea. And I don't even think they know, like the writers, I don't even think they know anything about the Apes. I think they just write it as they go and that's to drag you along for whatever TV show or the next movie <laughs> that they made. Yeah. So let's get into the Nick picks. It took a little bit too long to get to the action. The scenes in between the action scenes or in between showing the monsters were too long. Yeah, I didn't like how they handled that guy with the, I don't know if he was from, you know, I'm not even going to try to say where he was from because I don't want to bite in the comments down there getting mad, but he was either from uh, Ireland or Scotland. That guy died way too early. He did. He died way too early. I would have liked to see him interact with the Ewees and then the monsters too. Yeah, he died. I, when, he, when they killed him in the movie or when that tree, whatever that creature was, which was the first time and the last time we've seen that creature in the Hollow Earth, he ate the guy. And I'm like, why did they kill this dude? He was a good character, a good actor, had good on-screen presence, delivered his lines flawlessly, had a unique gun that I wanted to see him use. But man, he, he got destroyed or killed rather way too early. He should have survived till the end. Yeah, he should have. And another thing they picked too, they should have stayed with Kong in the in the in the baby eight. That was mm -hmm. the best part of the movie. It was. It was. When they linked up, even the introduction, he bit his finger and they start fighting the other apes and then yeah. they show how they had a connection. I'm like, man, this is better. This is way more entertaining than the human story. Exactly. Like, even when there was bonding, he ate the lizard and he gave him some, and then he sat on the rock like hey, so I'm sitting on the rock, I'm like, man. <laughs> that, that's the movie I wanted to see. <laughs> this is storyteller, right? <laughs> Exactly, that's the movie I came to see. Whoever wrote that part of the script, please let them do the next movie. Yeah, and I kept watching this, especially when they went down to the, uh, the eight little and capture our, our territory, our house, and wherever they were. I was like, man, let Gendy Tarnowski do the next mm -hmm. Kong or Godzilla movie. Because he knows how to, he, he'll make a whole movie with just the animals. He would. <laughs> In the theater, he compared it to Primal. He said, man, this feels like Primal. Yeah, it did. In the beginning. And then it turned, into, I don't know what it turned into <laughs> after that. So from a scale of whack to Masterpiece, where do you rank this movie? Now, I ain't going to lie, this movie was whack. And the reason it was whack is what we stated earlier in the review. They spent way, way too much time on the human characters. Time that we didn't ask to be spent on them and time that I wish I could have gotten back. If they could have just cut that out the movie and gave us a King Kong short film full of the scenes where the monsters were being shown and fighting or if they would just re retract those scenes and create the movie that we thought we were coming to see, which was what you described as similar to Primal, showing Kong's journey along with the small ape, showing their journey through the Hollow Earth world. And then they team up with King Kong. That would have been, or not King Kong, rather, teaming up with Godzilla. That would have been a great movie. Yeah. But this movie was whack. Yeah, and, and if they're going to do another one, they need a better villain. Because that Scar mm -hmm. King and that Ice Lizard trash. This movie is whack. That's why I'm going to get a straight up rating of whack. If you haven't seen this movie yet, don't even waste your time, wait for it to come on streaming, then you probably have a better time watching this on stream, but it's not mm. worth going to the movie theater. Not at all. But hey, that's been our review. Like this video, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to share, and we're out of here. Peace.